My name is Jenny Quinion. I'm a speech and language therapist and neuroscientist investigating brain and language recovery after stroke. My research focuses on recovery and treatment of aphasia, an acquired disorder of language that affects speaking, listening, reading and writing. By learning about how the brain recovers, we hope to develop better treatments to help people speak again and regain their lives. A third of all stroke patients will have problems with language. While some recover, many don't. And there are estimated to be about 400,000 people living in the UK with aphasia. For many people, there is no speech therapy to help them when they recover once they return home after hospital. Unfortunately, this means people are left with long-term communication problems and disability. They can't speak with family, friends, return to work or live independently. It can be incredibly isolating and depressing. However, it doesn't have to be this way. Our research, along with many other groups worldwide, have shown that irrespective of whether it is a few weeks, months or many years after a stroke, people can continue to recover and learn to speak again if they get the right treatment and enough of it. My message is it's never too late for the right treatment. And here at Queen Square, we're trialing a new approach to help treat aphasia. We aim to deliver 90 hours of treatment over three to four weeks to try to get people communicating again. We've run this for one year so far and have seen dramatic changes in people who've had their strokes a year, five, or even 10 years ago. Our research is now to understand how this approach is working so we can identify who is the right candidate for this treatment approach and how we can make it much more effective and usable for many other people here in the UK. With the support of our donors, the National Brain Appeal has funded many essential stroke-related projects. We have funded facilities and equipment, such as a biplane angiogram which enables thrombectomies to take place, supported new models of emergency diagnosis and care, including a new way to triage patients in the ambulance or even at home before the ambulance arrives, through to enabling new rehabilitation programmes such as ICAP. The National Brain Appeal funds research into new models of rehabilitation because otherwise it could take years to test and trial approaches which could be benefiting people now. The National Brain Appeal's support enables researchers and clinicians to get their great ideas off the ground quickly and once their effectiveness is proved, it is much easier to get long-term financial support from the NHS. My name is Dr. Catherine Dugan and I'm a clinical psychologist and senior postdoc researcher in the Queen Square Institute of Neurology and UCLH. People who have a stroke generally do not get nearly enough neurological rehabilitation, either as an inpatient or as an outpatient. The arrival of COVID-19 and the subsequent pausing of all non-essential services exacerbated this. As a response, we set up a comprehensive, multidisciplinary, online neurorehabilitation service called Enroll. While online rehab is nothing new, to our knowledge this was the first truly comprehensive service with input from neuropsychology, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech and language therapy and neurology. What was also novel was that this online service was delivered in groups. The reason this service was possible was because of the three-way partnership between UCL, UCLH and the same U charity who funded Ben Baer and myself. Tele-rehabilitation is an important model because people can receive high doses of therapy in their own homes. Many people told us that they preferred this to having to travel long distances to come into hospital. This also meant that people were not fatigued from travel and could attend multiple rehab sessions in the same day. Some of the successes of Enroll include the diverse number of group interventions that we could deliver from a wide range of rehabilitation specialists. One of the unique things was that the carers or family at home could observe the sessions if appropriate and even take part in the psychoeducation groups and ask the doctor or team questions themselves. Another crucial part of our service was the Carers Cafe, which I ran to inform, support and empower carers to care for their loved ones. 
Carers do not get enough support and can feel overwhelmed by the sudden changes in the person who had the stroke, but also to the new role they find themselves in. Doing this group online meant that they could zoom in for an hour a week from work or home and meet other carers in the same position. Hi, my name's Nick Ward. I'm a neurologist and a scientist, and my work aims to find out how people achieve the best possible long-term recovery after stroke. Research over the last few decades has dramatically improved how we treat people in the first few minutes and hours of their stroke. But we know that two-thirds of stroke patients leaving hospital still have disability, and we know that there are over a million people living with the consequences of stroke in the UK. Research from the Stroke Association tells us that many of those people feel abandoned and that they're not getting the support and the treatment that they need, perhaps to help them use their arms and hands, to walk or to communicate, but also to help them with unseen problems such as memory loss, poor concentration, fatigue, low mood, things that are easier to miss. So why are people feeling abandoned? Well, I think there's a belief that recovery stops about six months after stroke, the so-called plateau. Many stroke survivors know this isn't right, but the only way to change things is through research and innovation. In other words, to ask the right questions, to collect the right data, and to provide the evidence about effective treatments so that they can then become routinely available and help the most people possible. For example, at Queen Square, we run an upper limb rehabilitation program that aims to deliver 90 hours of treatment over three weeks to try to get people using their affected arms and hands again. We sometimes see dramatic changes in people who had their strokes many, many years ago. It was important to us that we publish these kinds of results to prove that the window of opportunity for improvement does not shut after three or even six months. This is the kind of work that will provide the evidence that will change the way we deliver rehabilitation and make sure people have access to lifelong treatment after stroke. My name is Tom Balchin. In 1999, I had a serious brain hemorrhage. In 2001, I founded the Arnie Charity to help survivors who felt stuck in limbo in the community. 20 years later, it continues to help patients to retrain and self-manage using its innovative techniques and evidence-based principles. Retraining, rehab and training is vital. It's also important to realise you're potentially propping your plastic template for recovery open by doing so. There have been lots of recorded cases where survivors recover function after many years, but survivors who haven't made consistent long-term efforts to keep muscles long and stave off contracture will be less likely to benefit. We see people quickly declining in action control and strength in the community, either through not having been given a customised programme to follow, or not understanding how, what, why and when to do it. So Arnie teaches specialist instructors and therapists this up-to-date recovery modes, typically task training, physical coping strategies and strength and power development and then helps them to support stroke survivors and families over the long term. In this way, we try to improve situations and engender autonomy. There are some 170 Arnie instructors that are available around the UK, centrally controlled, who drive to people's homes on, to rehabilitate them on a weekly basis for whatever frequency is mutually suitable and appropriate. The NCL Integrated Community Rehabilitation Project is the largest of three funded pilot programmes funded by NHS England. The two aims of the pilot scheme are, firstly to support teams to deliver coordinated rehabilitation in the home, starting as soon as possible after hospital discharge, and continuing for as long as this is beneficial, and secondly to develop a programme of systematic evaluation of stroke survivor actual and perceived recovery post-treatment. The unique approach taken by the NCL team has been to improve the amount of therapy time that is delivered, but particularly to focus on creating a more holistic programme of support 
to release each stroke survivor to focus on the delivered treatment. This holistic programme includes the creation of stroke buddies to support transition to home, a routine nurse-led review of medical issues, a complex multi-system meeting to review progress, psychological support where mood and anxiety are problems, group support events and novel approaches to improve engagement such as music therapy. We hope that by minimising medical, social, psychological and practical challenges associated with living with stroke, it will be possible for each NCL survivor to have more time to actively focus on working with the rehabilitation teams on their own recovery. With the new rehab programmes here at Queen Square, like ICAP, Enroll and Upper Limb, the evidence is really encouraging. Even many years after stroke, it is never too late to recover when given the right treatment. The window for plasticity and recovery doesn't shut. The research and data from the novel rehab approaches here show that with enough therapy, stroke patients can make real improvements to their language, motor and cognitive functions and regain their lives. We hope in the future, these new models of therapy become the norm and each and every survivor is given the opportunity to recover to their full potential. More rehab, more therapy means more recovery.